Good evening. Uh, I am very happy to be here today because this is. Uh, I am part of this IMA and I uh, am happy to be here to give a talk. I thank uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar and Dr. Arnashram for inviting me. So today I am going to talk, give a brief uh, talk about uh, acute MI. Uh, we know that uh, the acute MI mortality has been steadily decreasing over the last about four to five decades. And uh, the main reason is uh, several factors like uh, uh, the advent of intensive care units, monitors, high good ambulances where we transport the patients quickly and the thrombolysis had a big impact in improving the survival of patients with acute MI. And now we have moved further forward and the last 10 years we have been having primary angioplasty where we increase uh, the, 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 the obtruded blood, we have opened the obtruded blood vessel thereby establishing flow. So today, uh, the, the best form of therapy one can offer to patients with acute MI is primary angioplasty. And how do we further improve outcomes in acute MI? And uh, what we have been doing, and I, I have been particularly doing in Apollo Hospital, is a fast track approach. How quickly we manage the patients both using interventional and pharmacological management, thereby achieving a uh, TIMI 3 flow at the earliest and uh, improving the modality. So if a patient presents with acute MI, there are different options available. If the onset of pain is less than 3 hours, if you see a patient with acute MI within 3 hours, then if you, if you have access to a tertiary care hospital where you can send the patient to primary angioplasty, yes, you can definitely refer or you can thrombolyze if there is no contraindication. If the thrombolysis fails, what do you mean by failed thrombolysis? Is patients who have persistent chest pain after thrombolysis, persistent ST elevation, uh, after thrombolysis, uh, then you should send for rescue PCR. If it is more than 3 hours, then from 3 to 12 hours, no question at all, primary PCA is far superior to uh, thrombolysis. Because now the pathology of acute at MI is clearly established. We all know that primary P uh, acute MI occurs when there is a block rupture within the coronary artery. And the block rupture causes thrombus formation and thrombus completely occludes the blood vessel. So thrombus is the important pathological factor. So we have to aim at removing the thrombus either by thrombolysis or manually removing by primary angioplasty. What is primary angioplasty? It is opening up of the occluded blood vessel within the first 12 hours uh, of an acute MI. So the guidelines as early as 2004 is very clear that there is a lot of evidence and class 4 indication for any acute MI removal, the best therapy you can give to a patient is by doing primary angioplasty. So primary PCA is now increasingly used and uh, uh, in patients where primary PCA cannot be, for example from tertiary places like nearby places like Trivalu or Kanzipur where the patients cannot be shifted immediately, then we have a role for thrombolysis uh, in, the, in the first 3 hours. Beyond 3 hours, there is no doubt at all, even if it takes a longer time to transport, primary PCA is superior. There are several trials and you will see a key meta-analysis which has shown uh, decreased death, decreased reinfarction and decreased stroke. And uh, overall, there is significant advantages in primary angioplasty. So the time lost is muscle lost. Previously, we were talking about the golden hour. You know, every every few first hour is very very important after acute MI because that is the time when we can save the muscle and the, save the life. So, but now we are talking about minutes, platinum minutes. Every minute lost is muscle lost. So remember, every any patient who comes with acute MI, you have to quickly uh, we have to give the emergency treatment with medications and uh, like aspirin and clopidogrel, loading dose three and playoff clopidogrel and shift immediately if, uh, to the nearest tertiary care hospital where we can do a primary angioplasty. So people, the major delay is the people themselves lose time of chest pain. Once he reaches the doctor, we don't lose much time when we refer the patient or we immediately start treatment. But the problem is, the, for the patient to recognize that it is a cardiac pain, it takes a longer time. So the pain to, uh, to, to phone, to phone the hospital, P to P time, that is the longest delay which is responsible for increased death in acute MI. So what do we do to reduce the speed to be time? Is to increase awareness. We need to increase awareness. We have to tell them about the characteristic of pain. Any pain, they should uh, reach the nearest hospital. So we have to increase the uh, patient awareness to present early to the hospital. 
and we should also, depending upon the arrival of the time, time of arrival and other factors, you have to decide to normalize this primary PCA. As the time of treatment increases, more irreversible and permanent damage occurs to the heart muscle. See, this is the uh, block which causes a rupture in acute termite where the blood clot completely occludes the blood vessel. And that is the time you see ST elevation in, in ECG. And without wasting time, if we do a primary angioplasty, what we do is we put a stent and we open the blood vessel so that there is significant reduction in the ST segment elevation and complete regression. Uh, there, is, uh, there is different data to show that it improves survival. As the time taken increases, so the time taken uh, to open the artery increases, the permanent damage increases, and it is also related to increased mortality. So, so beyond, if you see that, the results of thrombolysis versus primary PCI, is very, very uh, large difference. There is advantages there with primary PCI, particularly when the patient presents beyond three hours. The reason is, after three hours, what happens, the clot burden increases. As you have more clot in the blood vessel, the thrombolysis may not work. So we have to manually remove the thrombus when the clot burden is very high. So we have to aim to improve the door to balloon time. That is from the time when the patient arrives in the hospital till the time we open the balloon. That is the door to balloon time. We should be short as, short as possible. And we have a lot of drugs are there which I am going to talk to you briefly. And then the age, how to enhance the myocardial recovery and the role of drug eluting stents and other newer stents. So this is a clear picture, infarct size measured by nuclear imaging, which has shown that as the infarct size increases, uh, uh, increases the time taken from the symptom onset to the balloon time onset, the infarct size also increases. So we all have certain guidelines so that we act in a fast track, pro fast track manner, so that we don't reduce. We have, for example, the door to ECG time should be less than five minutes. And within the five minutes, uh, the, the emergency medical officer should read the ECG and, uh, and inform, uh, empower to activate the cath lab and inform the interventional cardiologist. So the gas tap staff are, are, are prepared 24 by 7. And uh, our objective here is to uh, immediately uh, do the angioplasty. We have major problems. Like the major problem we find in our country is door to consent time because the patient's relatives take time to get consent for the angioplasty. That is the, the main reason is because, again, the cost. We have to have a, a good insurance system and also have good awareness about, uh, about the uh, importance of primary angioplasty. Uh, in in Apollo hospitals, we don't immediately insist on payment. Most of the time, in our patients who come to primary angioplasty, uh, they give an undertaking and we do the primary angioplasty and then the patient pays before discharge. So, so we have to uh, uh, optimizing the, with the optimal uh, pharmacotherapy. Uh, you know that in any acute MI, we have to load with aspirin and clopidogrel and a high dose of 80 mg patrovostatin and, uh, and uh, shift him uh, to the uh, uh, hospital. So the other drug which, is, which, which is, uh, uh, we use in the cath lab is called bevalerudin and this which has been found to be very superior and in fact I was one of the principal investigators at a trial involving uh, bevalerudin uh, where we, uh, we said that it's a very effective drug and uh, it is used instead of apparel. So this is a trial which showed great benefit Bevalent monotherapy decreased death, and this study was followed up to two years and gave data of its superiority with less bleeding. So, other drug I think you are all aware now because of increased pharmaceutical companies coming out of this Prasugrel. Prasugrel is again uh, an yeah, uh, antiplated drug which is similar to clopidogrel, more powerful than clopidogrel. But uh, the Prasugrel, the advantage of Prasugrel is it acts very fast. Clopidogrel, if you give 300 mg, it takes about 6 hours to reach the blood, uh, optimal concentration of the blood. Whereas Prasugrel, if you give, you reach the concentration within 30 to 60 minutes. So it's an ideal drug in the acute MI setting. So uh, I, an ideal dose of Prasugrel is 60 mg loading dose followed by 10 mg per day. Or the other option we have is to give double dose of Clopidogrel. If you don't have Prasugrel, we can give 600 to 900 mg loading dose of Clopidogrel followed by 150 mg per day. This study has shown that compared to clopidogrel conventional dose of clopidogrel, prasugrel decreases the cardiovascular death MIR stroke as well as uh, decreases the incidence of stent thrombosis. So clearly we have an advantage of prasugrel but we have to pay the expense of increased bleeding. So that is why prasugrel is not a replacement of clopidogrel and hence uh, clopidogrel has the same status as we are using now 
and there are only selective indications to use prasugrel such as in acute MI or patients who develop an acute MI despite who are already on aspirin and propagrel develop an acute event then there is an indication to give prasugrel. Further, uh, during angioplasty, how do we, uh, uh, re uh, we enhance the myocardial recovery? Now we have realized that even when the block is removed, we have a good flow in the blood vessel. But still, the small vessels which perfuse the myocardium, if it is not intact, then the mortality is higher. So ST segment resolution is a very, very important factor in, 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 in deciding the out, uh, outcome of after acute MI. So the, we have several devices like thrombus aspiration. We know the pathology is clot. So now we have to remove the clot manually. So we have thrombus aspiration and thrombectomy devices. We no more use balloon in acute MI. So we have suction catheters like this, where we have four free uh, lumen, which is used to suck the clot out. And I would see, these are several examples where uh, we have taken the clot out of the uh, infarct later artery and uh, you can see this uh, filter uh, where you can see the blood clots. So, and in the study it has been correlated that trauma aspiration definitely has more ST segment resolution than a conventional PCI. Because conventional angioplasty, when you use a balloon, there is every chance that the clot can get fragmented and can go down distally and block the small micro vessels. So by, by using a thrombus aspiration, we don't allow that distal embolization to happen. So again, this, this was a thrombus aspiration follow-up to one year, it has shown that conventional or conventional balloon therapy, thrombus aspiration uh, improves survival compared to uh, conventional balloon therapy. So other than that, there are several other ways of improving the outcome in acute MI. For example, the approach what we use, whether they use the radial approach or the femoral approach, like leg or the hand. Uh, in, in, uh, being, I introduced the radial approach as early as 2002 uh, when I came back, came back from France we, and uh, developed this uh, uh, technique and it has been shown that uh, in, in patients with acute MI we often use very powerful antiplatelet drugs like clopidogrel, 2 p 3 valrodin, high dose of aspirin, so all that can apparent, all that can cause more bleeding and cause local complications like this, so to avoid this we can do primary angioplasty using the radial approach where it has been shown to have almost zero local complications. So I am just going to uh, end my talk with next uh, about 10 to 12 slides which shows some of the interesting cases where we have done and saved lives in acute MI. This is a normal angiogram showing a left coronary angiogram and this is the circumflex artery and this is the right coronary artery. This is how a normal angiogram looks like and this patient is a 63 year old male who came to us with an acute inframposterolateral lateral MI. So you can see ST elevation in lead 2, lead 3, lead AVF and there is ST elevation in V5 and V6. And you can also note that there is ST segment depression with upright T wave in V2, V3 which is again uh, indicating a post true posterior MI. So it's acute intro posterior lateral MI in a patient who, had, who reached the hospital quickly within the first 3 hours. So this patient was given uh, aspirin and clopidogrel loading dose of 600 milligram. We immediately take it for angi angiogram and you see we found that circumflex artery was totally occluded and the circumflex artery correlates with the inforopostolateral territory which we saw ST elevation the ECG and immediately we, we quickly put a wire and we aspirated the clot out and then put a stent and you see the blood vessel is fully open now and this, this was done in a very timely fashion so that by within the first three hours patient underwent uh, primary angioplasty and you see the ECG after the acute MI, you, uh, after the primary angioplasty, the ST segment resolution is completely settled down, there is good resolution. Not only that, you see there is no Q waves at all showing that there is not much of permanent damage. So if primary angioplasty is done in a timely fashion, we can save muscle which in fact translates in terms of reduction in mortality. So this is again another patient who has is a, is a smoker, yeah.